Cobra Kai Season 5 had an explosive ending that'll be sure to keep fans talking. Today, I'll explain the ending and break it all down. Hi, I'm Ken Cole, and if you're a fan of Cobra Kai, you're in the right place. And if you enjoy this video, go ahead and hit like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything going forward. Now I'm going to explain to you and break down the ending of Cobra Kai Season 5, so there will be plenty of spoilers. Just a fair warning. Let's start when Terry Silver is about to fight Daniel LaRusso. Terry says, first I took care of Chosen, now you. This is where Miyagi-Do ends. Daniel responds, Miyagi-Do existed before any of us and it'll be around long after we're gone. And the roots are strong, so the tree will survive. This is a reference to Karate Kid 3. After Daniel dropped Mr. Miyagi's bonsai tree into seawater, <laughs> And after Mike Barnes broke the tree, Hey Daniel, make a wish. No! It looked like it might not survive. Is he gonna be okay? Uh, depend. If root strong, tree survive. After Daniel suffered at the hands of Terry Silver, Everything you taught me! I, I did the opposite! Everything! I couldn't have been worse! Mr. Miyagi showed Daniel that the tree healed. Hey, look at that. It's gonna make it, huh? Hey. Make it because I have strong root. Just like you, Daniel san. No need nothing except what inside you to grow. Next, Daniel and Terry Silver fight, and we see flashbacks to Karate Kid 3, where Terry Silver is teaching Daniel the Quicksilver method. This is the first time the Quicksilver method is fully referenced in the series. So if you haven't seen Karate Kid 3, you might not be clear on what's happening here. Quicksilver was a brutal training method that Terry used to torture Daniel, warp his mind. This is a living, breathing, fighting machine that wants to detach your head from the rest of your body. And give him false confidence for the tournament in 1985. Johnny, by the time that little twerp steps into the ring to defend his title, I'm gonna have him thinking he's invincible. You're ready! You're ready! I'm ready! Oh, man! Here we see that Daniel is using the Quicksilver method against Terry. And we hear the first rule. Rule number one, a man can't stand, he can't fight. Then Terry readies his fist for his patented silver bullet technique that was quite devastating throughout season five. Yes. However, Daniel blocks this with his knee. Then he strikes Silver's chest for rule two of the Quicksilver method. A man can't breathe, he can't fight. Then Terry grabs Tori's trophy to use as a weapon, the illegitimate trophy, the one Terry paid the ref off so that Tori would win. Then for Quicksilver rule number three, a man can't see, he can't fight. Daniel goes for his classic crane kick. People know this kick from the finale of Karate Kid 1. But there's an added meaning with Daniel using it on Terry Silver. In Karate Kid Part 3, Terry mocked Daniel for using the crane kick. Why do I have to do this with this thing? Because it's a part of the training. Because I'm teaching you techniques you don't have. Techniques you need to win the tournament. What, you think you can rely on that crane crap? So now Daniel kicks that back in Terry's face, so to speak, and Terry goes down. Terry's students abandon Cobra Kai, throwing shirts in Terry's face, the very merch he was always so proud of. I want our logo on billboards, t-shirts, and on the backs of both Old Valley champions. Now we're talking. Outside, Kyler the bully takes credit for saving the day, and then Stingray recants his testimony that Kreese attempted homicide, which sent Kreese to jail. The question is, how credible is Stingray as a witness now that he's apparently committed perjury in a court of law? Robbie and Kenny come to an understanding, and Robbie and Tori make up and get back together. Then Sam confronts Miguel about the octopus jewelry he dropped at Miyagi-Do after Sam broke up with him, and he admits he did. And then for the first time, he tells Sam he loves her, and Sam says she loves him back. Aww. Then the hijacked Reggie's ride or die shows up with Johnny telling Carmen that it was thoughts of her and their family that kicked him into a new gear to win the day. Then Mike Barnes helps Chosen out, so Chosen survived his battle with Terry Silver, but he's badly injured with, as Chosen says, just a flesh wound. Just a flesh wound. As he gets into the ambulance, he says he should have had a shorter Long Island iced tea, which means he's been drunk during this whole battle with Terry Silver. Makes you wonder what would have happened if they weren't drinking. Then Daniel spots Terry's Rembrandt painting in the car. And Mike says that it should cover the cost of the furniture store that was burnt down in episode three. Fun fact, 
That Rembrandt painting is called The Storm on the Sea of Galilee, which depicts the moment right after Jesus had walked on water and right before he calmed the storm. Does anyone else think that Terry might have a messiah complex? Anyway, Mike intends to sell the painting, but it might have to be on the black market because the world would know that Terry owned the painting. So if Mike's not careful, he might end up in handcuffs soon. Speaking of, Terry is escorted out of the dojo in handcuffs. Honestly, this is a difficult moment for me to watch as a Terry Silver fan. The cop says that because of Stingray's revised statement, Terry's facing a ton of charges and that his lawyers are going to be pretty busy. Or will they? Terry has a history of bribing or friendships with the DA, some of whom I may or may not be related to. Who's the DA on the case? Uh, Mr. Cole. Uh, Mr. Cole. Ah. <sighs> Look who it is, my favorite cousin. I think he'll be out pretty quickly. Johnny wishes that Silver and Crease would wind up as cellmates, but the cop says, did you hear what happened? Then we see that the apparent murder scene at the beginning of the episode, where it looked like Crease died, was a fake out. The blood was the red jello that Crease had been collecting from his cellmates. Crease makes short work of the guards and then takes the doctor's ill-fitting clothes and uses his counselor's ID card that he swiped while giving her a sob story to open the prison door and he walks out a free man. So now Crease is on the outside, and Terry's on the inside, and the story is set up for possible future seasons. So there's the breakdown of the ending. Let me know what you thought of the ending and all of season five in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything going forward. And if you'd like to support the channel, we now have memberships. And now that you've seen season five, the next thing you should watch is Cobra Cole right now. See you next time.